The Wastelanders DLC introduced a lot of secrets and hidden content to Fallout 76, and I'm about to show you 23 things that you probably missed during your new journey so far. Get ready to learn something new! There's so much to discover in the new Fallout 76 Wastelanders DLC, and I have managed to gather over 20 points that will surely interest you. Most of the details you are about to see can be useful one way or the other. There are also secrets that are funny and curious to just know. Anyway, knowledge about your favorite game is never too much, don't you agree? Now, I will try to provide the respective locations as much as possible, and I will also provide relevant tips whenever I see fit. I hope you will come out of this video with more things to explore and better tips to improve your gameplay. So, without any further delay, let's get right into it. Let's start with something that apparently is in the game since the release day, but not many people seem to know about it. If you play in third-person mode, you are probably going to feel like you have missed a lot. Recently, my friend Madoc Rod shared with me that you can zoom out with your mouse scroll button to decide the zoom range you want to play. You need to press the scroll down button, then move your mouse at the same time, otherwise it will just show your favorites bar by default. I was really shocked when I saw it actually worked. I have been playing this game since the beta and I had no idea you could actually do this. Well, now I no longer have to stare at my backpack or arms. I can actually see my entire body, including my legs, and that's refreshing. Too bad this zoom option sometimes resets in instanced areas and when you fast travel too. Still, an option is an option. Freedom of choice. Isn't it a beautiful thing? Cannibals are part of the Wastelanders DLC and I don't mean the Blood Eagles, I mean actual cannibals. There is a one-time scene at a mountainside bed and breakfast where you get invited to stay over by a female NPC for some caps, of course. I won't spoil the story too much, but the scene can have different outcomes depending on your choices. In my case, I used the perception option to let her know that I suspected something is not right there. That's when she told me cannibals were at the basement setting a trap to eat me. Oh gosh, no. I just went there after talking to her and yep, the basement was filled with high-level NPCs named as cannibals, as you can see. I killed them all, but there is no reward or any further dialogue options when you are done. The husband can be found in the kitchen area and both of them will keep saying they don't believe they survived the encounter, and that's it. I tried to sever jump and the scene doesn't reset, ever. So yeah, this is a one-time only thing per character, still, it's really interesting to find such types of scenes. There is a new currency system in Appalachia, and gold bullion is certainly not easy to get. So people started doing something they do best, cheating the system, fake the gold and sell it as the real thing. I came across this rare random encounter a few days ago where you find out about a shady fake gold business. You can see the fake gold bars inside the cart, named as suspicious, questionable and even dubious. And then two notes with some lore, which clearly reveals a fake gold business. I also heard about another encounter like this one, where raiders will sell you gold for caps. They try to sell it as the real thing, but of course, it is fake. So far, no one seems to have found random encounters featuring the real gold bullion or even treasury notes, but maybe they do exist, it's just they are so rare that nobody has really found them yet. Well, only time will tell in this case. Something that has been confirmed is the fact that NPCs can steal your equipped weapons if you die around them. 
most precisely during events. At first, I thought this was a problem that only applied to radiation rumble, as I reported in my recent news. But that's not true. It extends to events and encounters with NPCs. So be very careful during the new events, don't die, or you might lose your precious gear. This is particularly worrisome for bloodied builds, we die a lot, even when playing super carefully. Maybe it's time for a change. Hmm. Just keep in mind you can lose any equipped gear piece every time you die during events with NPCs, such as riding shotgun and radiation rumble. That should give you enough motivation to play extra safe or use different gear just to ensure you don't lose your best weapons in case you end up dying for real. Faction daily quests are one of the main ways to farm reputation and treasury notes at the same time. But something a lot of people don't know is that you can push the rewards to your needs. Let's say you want to earn as much reputation as you can. Then go ahead and make free contributions to the factions. Give them things they need for free and they will like you even more. It kind of makes sense, doesn't it? On the other hand, if you would like to get more rewards, such as caps, ammo, junk, or even weapons, then use the special dialogue options to convince an NPC to give you extra payment for your efforts. You can do this sort of customization with all the new Wastelanders dailies. So the next time you do them, pay attention to all the options and decide what rewards you need the most. Talking about reputation, there is this small outpost at Ohio River Adventures which became some sort of Marluk factory with the Wastelanders DLC. It belongs to the raiders and you can do two missed quests there every day for some extra caps and reputation with the raiders. This is extremely handy to do if you are trying to max your creator's reputation. All you have to do is talk to fish bones and defend the water purifiers from Amarluk waves and then get back to him to receive your rep. Then you can also offer Amarluk products to Black Eye, another NPC, such as meat and even eggs, and she will give you even more reputation. It's not a lot, I must confess, but every little bit helps, especially at certain tiers where increasing your bar is extremely difficult and slow. Still on the Raiders topic, I have recently found this small outpost to the west of the crater in the Toxic Valley. This place used to be a mine, but now it belongs to the Raiders and it's called the Crater Watch Station. I have explored it and I really don't know what's the purpose of this location. Maybe it's unfinished content or something will happen here in a future DLC. I'm not quite sure. I did both faction quest lines and none leads you here. Also, the NPCs are mostly unnamed and the only named one doesn't have a lot to say either. So this is a strange location with no real purpose for now. Still, it's probably something you didn't know existed until this point. Another strange but really interesting addition to the game is this sort of Scorch Beast model, which looks like a previous mutation of the creature. They clearly look different but very similar at the same time. You can find this new landmark at the Seneca Rocks on the left side of the mountains. You can't see much from the spawn point unless you have a really good zoom in your camera or weapon. If you would like to check it closer for yourself, then you have to climb the mountains with your jetpack until you are on top of it, literally. Then you can use the photo mode to inspect the creature as you prefer. It's pinned down with several metal sticks to the mountains and nobody seems to know why or how did it even get there. I mean, the current scorch beasts we see in Appalachia are way more advanced, generations ahead of this one, I would say. Maybe it's escaped from a nearby lab or research facility. Again, this could be content to be explored in a future DLC. It would make a lot of sense, at least. 
This one is not a secret anymore since several people have covered it already, so you are probably familiar with it by now. There is a new interlooper creature in game, a baby one actually. You can find it inside the deep cave, a new wastelanders marked location. In order to find it you just have to enter through the main entrance and go straight then left through the tunnels. It's very easy to find, I actually discovered it myself while doing the main quest here. I thought it was an alien at first. Well, in theory, it is an alien. A supernatural creature could be considered an alien all the same, I think. Anyway, we barely know anything about the interlooper, but then again, everything about this cave is strange. Even the flowers and all the lightning going on there. I only really know it bleeds if you hit it with any weapon and the blood seems to be black. Other than that, it's only rumors and speculation at this point. Again, maybe we will find more about this species in future content. Hopefully, because it's too much of a mystery and that's no bueno. Alright, another great mystery in game right now is this new stone edge added to the Savage Divide at the very south of the map. This new monument features six stones and four of them have engraved paths on each side, so we have eight different engravings in total. I can't say for sure what they are, even less what they mean, but they really remind me of facility plans. But for fantasy games like the Elder Scrolls Online, with very ancient structures, with strange rooms, tunnels, corridors and very weirdly shaped parts like boss rooms. In this monument it looks like there are a few mazes there as well, if they are real maps. But then again this could be something else, something completely different. What do you guys think it means? Let me know if you have any theories. Now, let me show you some free cosmetics that came live with the Wastelanders DLC. There are about one dozen of them and you get them through the main quests and events mostly. There is a new Blue Ridge Caravan outfit and mask which can be rewarded from the Riding Shotgun event. You can also get a popular Chinese stealth armor and helmet from the Settler's main questline. You shouldn't miss this one because it works like a hazmat suit with stealth included. You can also get this badass Blood Eagle outfit if you follow Beckett's questline. He is a major companion and you can see how to recruit him in one of my guides. There is also the Radical's face mask from the Wayward Souls questline to complete your raider's look. And finally, if you met the veteran player requirements in the past, you should have unlocked the new Mountain Scout outfit. I suspect there are a few more, but I am yet to discover them. There are new Nuka-Cola flavors in Appalachia and they can be extremely helpful to your gameplay. If you have done the main questline, you have already unlocked one of them, which is the vaccine for the inoculation process. During the quest, you will craft this vaccine using a Nuka-Cola format, but it's not only for the quest. No, no, no. You will learn the plan as well, which means you can craft it through any alchemy bench under the healing section. The name depends on what you have chosen for your own vaccine. In my case, it's Nuka-Cola, my name is on it. Now, why would you craft or even use this item? Well, it gives you 15% reduced damage versus Scorched, so it's fantastic for the Scorched Beast Queen fight, for example. It's not even difficult to craft, so why not? The second new Nuka-Cola is the Cranberry flavor. You can find a fixed spawn right at this Cult of the Mothman outpost. I haven't found many around, but that's probably because they are supposed to be rare. This new drink gives you a 2% experience boost and it can stack with other buffs. So it's something you really want to grab and use whenever you are farming. It's a new way to increase your experience gain and level up faster. 
There are four main companions, two major and two minor. You surely know that by now, but A, there is the fifth element. It's kinda of a hidden companion, to be honest. Some people are lucky enough to find her without even trying. Others, like me, need to server jump dozens and dozens of times to come across the settler wanderer. The fifth ally who can spawn in certain random encounters and she can be really difficult to find for some players. I have only found her twice and I have done over 200 random encounters in this past week, so I really know about how she can be a rarity. Nonetheless, she is a very cheerful character and she likes to hum and play the guitar, so you might want to recruit her at some point during your Wastelanders journey. With companions, we have also received an upgrade on the well-rested buff. Now, whenever you sleep at your camp with a minor ally spawn, you will receive the Kindred Spirit, which is basically the same 5% increased experience gain, but it lasts for 3 hours instead. You can also receive another buff called the Lover's Embrace, which can be obtained by romancing one of the two major allies, Beckett or Daguerre. They need to be spawned at a time too, as obvious. The buff has a different name, but it's the exact same as the Kindred one. 5% experience gain for 3 hours. This means you have to sleep less times during long sessions by simply spawning an ally at your camp. Pretty useful, don't you think? Oh meu Deus, I found this one by complete chance. I was doing a daily quest when I spotted this scorched officer inside the foundation. He was shooting at me and I was really confused for a second. Nobody, and I mean nobody in this settlement, cares about enemies. They didn't shoot at the Scorch, they didn't even move. I am guessing the NPCs don't have any aggro for each other in the main settlements, because the Scorch didn't hit any of them either, just me. Why me? So we danced in the town for a bit, it was funny at first, but then it became disappointing. How come guards don't respond to enemies? They are even carrying guns and patrolling the entrances. I would understand if a normal settler whose building doesn't attack, but a guard? Really? Ugh, my poor immersion needs repair after this one. Another strange thing that I have seen myself is that friendly NPCs can spawn as legendary, including 3 stars. Now, that's weird, I have recently seen this raider Reaver as a 3 stars legendary during a daily quest. I had to kill him. Good thing you don't lose reputation by doing that. Anyway, all sorts of NPCs have a chance to spawn as legendaries, including quests and even random encounter NPCs. It's a strange world now, basically anyone has a chance to be legendary, less the players. We are still waiting for the legendary perk system, maybe one day we will all get the same opportunities, huh? Fight for equality and fairness. The Purveer has moved her shop to the Rusty Pig in the Ash Heap, but there is a secret underneath. If you follow the tunnel in the basement level, you will eventually end at his locked door, but if you pay attention, there is someone on the other side, another a Mole Miner, whose name is literally that Mole Miner. He is a friendly NPC who walks around the area and that's pretty much it. It's a mystery what he's doing there. It's Seems like he's working for the Prevere, judging by all the parts in this room. But why is he locked down there then? Is he a slave? Or again, it could be unfinished content. Maybe we will see a new quest here at some point. For now, it remains a mystery. Moreover, we don't know where the path in this tunnel leads, since the way is blocked, or locked in this case, so maybe there is a new location as well. So many questions, so little answers. Faction Conflict Encounters is the new way to farm a faction reputation. I have even made a complete guide explaining how to do it. 
All in all, there is a new type of random encounter spawn that only spawns faction versus faction scenes. And some of these locations have a really high chance to spawn settlers and raiders versus other enemies or even against each other. By defending your favorite faction, you can earn small amounts of reputation, and as you surely know, every little bit helps by stacking it up at the end of the day. Just make sure that all the NPCs don't die, or there won't be any reputation reward for you. Just a heads up. For those who haven't played much lately, let me inform you that there are five new types of enemies, the brand new floaters who can assume different elements, as you can see by the different colors, there is fire, ice and poison damage floaters. They explode, open death and can do further damage to you if you stay near their bodies. They are pretty tough, especially in terms of defenses. Now we have different types of human enemies as well, such as the cult of the Mothman in dozens of outposts and the Blood Eagles who also have their own camps across the map. You can find low and high level enemies for both factions, however some blood eagles can spawn inside power armor. There are also Chinese soldiers in the deep cave where the commanders will be inside power armors as well. Finally we have the rare Wendigo Colossus who spawns in certain nuked areas through a random encounter. It has about 5 or 6% chance to appear though, as I said, rare creature. Besides being a little tough to fight, this 3 stars legendary doesn't seem to drop anything special. Well, at least he has some sort of panic or fear skill that makes the fight different from everything else, but that's about it. I'm sure you have already heard the Blood Eagle outpost alarm. When you approach or start fighting the eagles, the camp alarm will often go off, but it's not automatic. I thought it was a new feature for their camps, but it's not. I have discovered that if it goes off, it means one of them pushed the button. If you clear the camp fast enough or prevent them from getting close to the trigger, then the alarm won't go off ever. In fact, you can push the button yourself if you want. But watch out, it will still call reinforcements and more eagles will head towards the camp you are at. I think it's a pretty nice detail though. Now, let's talk a little bit about new traders. There are at least 15 new ones. I'm actually thinking about making a complete guide featuring all of them. So I don't want to be too extensive here. I would take a long time to do it, as you can imagine. So each faction has four different faction vendors with their own items, including the faction items for gold bullion, depending on your reputation tier. Then there's Smiley at the Wayward Inn, who trades gold bullion for caps. There are lots of traders from random encounters too, such as scavengers and traveling traders. Their inventories are always randomized. We also have rags at Vault 79 with dozens of new plans in exchange for gold. I think these are all the highlights. Of course, there are many more, but they hardly bring any value to the end game. Oh no, don't even get me started with this one. For those who think the Wastelanders didn't bring a lot of new gear, then consider checking the facts again. There are over 50 new plans in game and most of them are weapons, armor and or mod plants. It's even possible to make new builds around the bow and the new bow perks. Most of these useful plans are sold by regs and the gold bullion faction vendors, but there are a few exceptions, such as recipes and camp items. I have recently purchased a secret service chest plan and crafted a few times. The system basically works differently than normal plans. You get a chance to get a legendary piece from 1 to 3 stars with randomized effects as well. You can drop, trade or sell these craft legendaries, you can only script it. It's a shame. I have actually crafted a really good Vanguard chest piece, but I have a bloodied build, so I am kind of forced to script it since I can't do anything else with it. I wish they just made it tradable because, you know, hackers and cheaters always find a way to make these items 
tradable and then they sell it for in real life money and eventually the entire community has these items but yeah usually the legit player is the one who gets screwed because we farm for the plants we craft it dozens and dozens of times until we get what we want and then there's people who throw some dollars zeros and get what they want without any effort because cheats hacks glitches and such allow it so why not just make it free for all and well ignore all these glitches if they appear who cares it's already tradable so it doesn't matter but yeah let's move on to the last point finally to finish this video i have something most of you probably didn't notice yet it's in the dlc patch notes and it's about an improved lightning and rendering system we now have more clouds better lightning and overall more contrast and colors in the wasteland it's not a huge difference but it's enough to notice something has changed I surely did. We even have a cloudy weather for longer periods of time now, before it would always switch quickly between sunny and rainy. Now it's different. Another change is during sunrises and sunsets, the colors are always more dramatic and I really love that. Did you notice the changes yourself? Well, 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 this turned out a bit longer than I expected. Anyway, these are all the 23 things I have gathered during the first Wastelanders week that you probably didn't notice until this point. I hope you got to learn something new with this video. That was my goal all along. I am sure I will find more new things in the following weeks, so expect another tips and tricks video in the near future. I am Arte Branku, thank you so much for all your support. If you enjoyed the content, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to help me grow. You can also support me even further if you would like. The links are always in the description below the video. I will wrap things here. Thank you again for watching and I will see you very, very soon in the next one. Until then, take care. Adios. Bye bye.